Let me ask then uh, my colleagues in, in medical oncology here as a surgeon, uh, we treat patients uh, that have stage three disease and we surgically resect them and then we have an adjuvant discussion. So what is your view on treating these patients then with checkpoint inhibitors in an adjuvant setting? Um, should we do that and, uh, and how do we do that? So the, I would say that the model for every adjuvant therapy that's worked is to find a drug that works with survival advantage in the metastatic setting and bring it to the adjuvant setting. And we've never had that in melanoma until now. What we can rest easy about is that we have brought those trials to the fore and they have accrued, the ipilimumab trials have accrued, we're waiting for the data, the BRAF trials are accruing and we'll wait for that data. And we haven't sat and waited. The PD-1 antibodies are coming out in the adjuvant setting. But I would also caution that there have been drugs for other solid tumors that have had massive survival advantage in the metastatic setting, but have been completely bunk <laughs> with no activity and significant toxicity in the adjuvant setting. And the evidence for that is the uh, bevacizumab in the adjuvant treatment of colorectal cancer. No significant benefit. And therefore, I would say, if you are a patient or you have a patient that is interested, send them for the clinical trial. Uh, Off-label use, I think, is erroneous, and it, we don't do that in, in my practice. Yeah, I would agree with you there um, and hit all the highlights. I mean, clinical trials is, is the first option. Um, the second option, though, you know, is, is whether or not to even do interferon. And I'd, I'd be curious, I, I personally uh, do not give a lot of it and, and most, many times dissuade patients from doing it uh, just because I think the toxicity to efficacy ratio is not quite there yet or, or, or ever been there and now and maybe was approved in a time where we didn't have good drugs in the metastatic setting. I was I'm curious to how, how you guys think about adjuvant interferon at, at, at this point. I like the, you know, the data for these patients who present with ulcerated disease. Now granted, it's a meta-analysis of multiple trials in different ways, uh, but the data presented with an ulcerated primary is interesting enough for me to have a discussion with those patients. Uh, the only real randomized trial that has shown a significant survival advantage for a subpopulation is 18991, which only took stage three patients and showed benefit in those ulcerated primaries with a microscopic single node. Where we go from that is an extensive discussion with patients about the risks and really the benefits. We know that there's relapse free survival benefit with interferons that might allow those patients to uh, be free of disease for a longer time and come to the requirement for therapy at a later time where therapy can be better. But we also know that there's significant morbidity from these therapies. And an extensive discussion at our clinic would uh, foster the idea of understanding and having a discussion and coming for a second mm -hmm. visit before making that decision. Sure. I think still since uh, I see many of these patients uh, that we've sent to my medical oncology colleagues, I think that there are patients also who do quite well on interferon. I think it's important, important also to recognize that not every patient will have those side effects. We have, and I think that also managing the expectations of those side effects are very important. In addition, I think it's also uh, important to recognize that there are studies that have shown an improvement not only in recurrence-free survival, but also in overall survival, including the initial 1684 study that did do that. I think one of the challenges, though, with the 1684 study, if we look at it, most of those patients were treated in an era before we did a sentinel node biopsy. So the majority of those patients actually had a very bulky disease, which would be very different from the patients that we see today um, across the United States uh, in patients that have lymph node metastatic disease, it's usually a one millimeter uh, nodule in that lymph or metastatic deposit in that lymph node. So I think the patient population has also shifted and changed. 
Having said that, though, I think it is important to recognize also that if we, when we do these adjuvant studies, we do need to have a comparator. We need to compare to something. And with the, um, uh, the ECOG and SWOG combination study, now the 1404 study, which will look at uh, a PD-1 inhibitor and interferon, I still believe that uh, interferon is an appropriate uh, uh, comparator to look at. And I think that also the ECOG 1609 study that has been completed will look at this and really look at the uh, interferon versus two different doses of ethylimumab to see how this fares in an adjuvant setting. I think it is it's um, not appropriate um, uh, to sort of say, well, let's not use interferon in an adjuvant setting. Uh, and uh, but have nothing else to offer patients. So I think that patients do deserve that discussion. Ultimately, it is up to the patient and their family to decide what treatment they wish to go on. It just means that we need to do more adjuvant studies, have better treatments for adjuvant studies with less side effects. And more adjuvant better. studies coming. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think these are difficult discussions, but I think uh, patients have to very carefully agree to not go on to interferon. It is an FDA-approved drug for this indication, and I think they need to understand what the controversies are. And I agree that you know, the risk-benefit ratio is certainly far from where we would like it to be, um, but I think there are some patients who feel that they want to be aggressive, and I, I think that it's important to give them that information and to very carefully make that decision. Uh, we certainly look all the time for finding clinical trials because I, I think we, we all believe we need something better than interferon. And, but if we don't have that, I think that is a good option. And, and I would agree completely that that has to be the standard uh, to which new agents have to be. Absolutely. So what do you guys feel about the European uh, or the study with the IPI-10 versus, versus placebo? Is that strong enough to make you want to give it in the adjuvant setting? I think so. So again, um, treating these patients, I think that if you look at the uh, the uh, side effect profile on patients who were receiving ivalimumab at 10 milligrams per kilogram, there were a substantial uh, grade three and grade four toxicities, and also grade a num five. and a grade five number of deaths as well. In that, that to me is quite concerning. We're doing this in adjuvant setting. Patients do not have any disease, and then to have multiple deaths in the study is extremely concerning mm -hmm. to me. Um, I think that 10 milligrams per kilogram, again, is not FDA approved in patients with mm -hmm. metastatic disease for treatment. So to have that dose, I find that quite challenging. Also, if we look at then the ECOG 1609 study that just completed enrollment, we know that in the higher dose, the 10 milligram per kilogram arm, that arm was also stopped for mm -hmm. a period of time due to uh, some deaths in that arm. So I think that that uh, for me, uh, I would feel very reluctant to refer my patients to receive 10 milligrams per kilogram uh, of ipilimumab in an adjuvant setting. I would also point out that, the, that even though there was a questionable equal uh, relapse-free survival benefit, the survival data is not out. Correct. Mm -hmm. And the toxicity data, it wasn't just the incidence of toxicity, but clearly it was the resolution of toxicity where there was a subset of patients who never resolved toxicity back to baseline. And that's important for people who are not presenting with any evidence of disease. And I think that's also important to recognize that if we then look at interferon in that adjuvant setting, it is uncommon not to have return to baseline function once you discontinue the treatment. So I think, again, uh, these are uh, discussions that need to be had with the patient in a very informed way to clearly delineate this for the a patients. A major point, yeah. major point.